Hey, you got barbecue and bottles here. Today, we are gonna be taking you through one of my absolute favorite recipes. It's how to brine your own homemade bacon and then smoke it. And I've gotta warn you, before you watch this video, you are never gonna be able to eat store-bought bacon again. This is absolutely one of the reasons that I got into barbecue and grilling and smoking in the first place. And hands down, it's one of the biggest improvements over anything that you can buy at the store. So we've got 20 pounds of pork belly here. We're gonna walk you through the steps of how to make the brine, the steps involved in all of that brining process, and then how to smoke it on the grill afterward. So stick with us, we're gonna show you the steps. Roll that intro. So before we get started on today's video, we're doing this video uh, as a bit of a challenge with Nate over at White Thunder Barbecue. I'm gonna put a link to his channel below. Go check it out. He's gonna be doing his own take on how to cure your own bacon at home. And you know, let us know down in the comments below whether you like his video better or our video better. We're doing a bit of a friendly challenge just to collab on something here on, on YouTube. Or you can go over to my Instagram channel. We've got a vote going on there. Let us know which one you prefer. Check out Nate's channel, White Thunder Barbecue. The guy's got some awesome videos there, great tips in terms of uh, recipes or cooks on how to grill, smoke, you name it. Go check him out. Again, link down below in the comment section. Uh, we're gonna start off with how to make the brine or the cure. So what you're gonna need is some brown sugar, some coarse ground black pepper, some kosher salt, a little bit of maple syrup, and then thyme or rosemary. So you can pick one or the other. Given we're doing two pounds, we're gonna try both, and we'll split our cure into two sections. One will do rosemary, one will do uh, thyme. And we'll just compare and contrast and, and see what the difference is in the end. So for every five pounds of pork belly that you're gonna be curing, what you're gonna need is a half a cup of salt, a half a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of black pepper, and a teaspoon of Instant Cure. So that was one other ingredient I forgot to mention. So Instant Cure, this is if, if you're planning on keeping your bacon for a while, this uh, helps preserve the meat, make sure that the pork isn't gonna grow any harmful bacteria. So let's get started. So again, we're gonna do four times this recipe given we've got 20 pounds of pork belly. So to start with, we're gonna put in a half a cup of brown sugar. So given we're splitting this into two, we'll do one cup in each of our containers. Don't forget to pack down your brown sugar for your measurements. That's how you measure brown sugar. You don't want it loose for purposes of measurements and sizing. Then we're gonna go in with a half a cup of, of kosher salt. And again, that means one cup for each of our brines or cures. All right, now a tablespoon of black pepper. And again, we're gonna, that means we'll do two in each of our containers. And we'll go in with a teaspoon of Instacure. So we'll double up. Perfect. Now maple syrup, we'll use this later when we're actually applying the cure. So now let's get the rosemary and thyme. So first we'll start with the thyme. And what you wanna do with the thyme is actually break, break off the, the stems. So you wanna take a branch like this and just break off the leaves here. 
Oh, this smells incredible. Reminds me of the last time. I personally, I really like thyme. If I were doing just one of these two, I, I'd do thyme over rosemary, hands down. We'll see what the taste test tastes like in the end, but uh, you know, aromatics wise, just really, really like like thyme in this this bacon recipe. And you don't have to worry about getting stems in here. Once the cure is actually done, we're gonna be rinsing the bacon. So you don't have to be too particular if there's stems that come off in this process. The other thing too, there's no set amount of rosemary that I like to use. Just do this to taste, depending on how strong you want your, uh, the, that rosemary flavor, or rather thyme flavor to, uh, to permeate through the, the cure. Perfect, so that's about enough for us. Now we're just gonna mix this up. Perfect, there we go. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the rosemary. We're just gonna take these rosemary sprays and we're gonna pull off a bunch of the, the leaves just to really bring out the aromatics. All right, now we're gonna mix that up. And we'll use this for the other 10 pounds of bacon that we've got to brine. But it's that easy, folks. That's how you make the cure. Now let's get this onto the bacon. All right, now for the pork belly. So you should go to your butcher and see if you can just order full pork bellies. And I'll show you what those look like here. So you can get a full pork belly like this. What I'd highly recommend is these usually come with the skin on. Just ask your butcher to trim the skin off. And it's a step you can do yourself, but you know what, while you're there, you're paying for your, your pork belly, might as well have the butcher do it, save you one step at home. What I'd also suggest is if you are doing that, make sure you ask the butcher just to put the skin in a little bag so that you can keep it and take it home. That kind of stuff, you chop it up, you put it out on the grill, makes incredible crackling, which maybe we'll do that on another video sometime. But you don't wanna have that pork belly skin just go to waste. What you're gonna to wanna to do is carve them into, I usually carve each one into about three sections with each section ranging somewhere between three to five pounds. And when we put these into plastic bags, once the cure goes on and we toss them into the fridge, this just makes it for a more manageable process. So let's pick our thirds and just cut through. All right, there is slice number one. And there's slice number two. So you'll see I'm not really trimming much of this excess fat off. If there's some here, you know, you might want to give that a bit of a trim, but bacon's a fatty meat. This will all render down once you get it in the pan afterward and you're actually making breakfast. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. I rarely trim pork bellies in a meaningful way before we actually brine them, or rather cure them. The other thing you might ask, why am I doing almost 20 pounds of pork belly here. Well, this process ends up taking somewhere between five to 12 days, depending on how long you want to cure your bacon for. So in my mind, if I'm making five pounds, I might as well just upgrade the batch, do 20 pounds. That's, that's, that way I've got more bacon just to go around, can pass some to your friends. Your friends will absolutely love this smoked bacon, they'll really appreciate it. So can't hurt just to increase the batch, save yourself some time in the long run. All right, let's get the other pork belly out here and we'll chop that one into thirds as well. Oh, just look at these bellies, really nice and meaty. It's gonna make for some great bacon. All right, 
Now that we've got that done, now let's get the brine or the cure on these. All right, now to get the cure on these, what we're gonna do is now put on the maple syrup. And what you wanna do is get real maple syrup, whether that's from the New England states, you know, we've got some from up here in Canada, but don't use any of that, you know, high fructose corn syrup stuff at the grocery store. You wanna be using the original maple syrup. So don't be worried about making a mess here. You're just gonna to wanna to pour the maple syrup on. This will act as a bit of a binder just to help get the pork to cure, or sorry, rather the cure to stick to your pork belly. Go on on both sides. And this is also gonna add an incredible layer of flavor. So now come in with your cure and just give this a generous coat. Make sure you get that evenly across the pork belly. Flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna lay a few more rosemary, or sorry, rather thyme sprigs down here just on the bacon for a little bit more flavor. Now, you're gonna to wanna to grab the largest Ziploc bags that you have. And this is why it's important just to slice the pork belly down into more manageable segments. And you're gonna to wanna to slide this pork belly right on in there. Just like that. Now if we've lost a little bit of the time, just add that back in there. Try to flatten out your pork belly, just like that. Now we're gonna ziplock this up. We're gonna toss it into a cookie tray and throw it into the fridge. All right, so we got the thyme bacon and the rosemary bacon all wrapped up into ziplock pouches. And you really wanna make sure you, you try and ziplock these as tight as you possibly can but the one thing I can guarantee you on this recipe is that these are gonna leak. This cure is gonna take a ton of moisture out of the pork belly as it cures in the fridge. And these bags are gonna become full of liquids that get extracted out of that pork belly. So make sure you put them in some kind of tray that has uh, edge on the side so that it will catch any juices that come out of the Ziploc bags to the extent that you didn't have a perfect seal and guaranteed no matter how well you think you've sealed these bags, this is gonna leak. So this is an absolutely critical step so that you just don't mess up your fridge. All right, so we're gonna pop these in the fridge. Just like that. And they're gonna sit there for somewhere between five to 12 days. So depending on how cured you want your bacon, We'd suggest leaving them longer. We've seen videos recommending as short as five days. We've seen some that have gone up to 12. We, we tend to be in that eight to 10 day range, kind of right in the middle. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is check in on these bags every two or three days and just flip them over. So now starts the waiting game. All right, it's Monday morning. We've gotta check on the bacon. But before we do that, I gotta get some coffee. Oh, perfect. Get that in ya. All right, now let's check on the bacon. So we've had this in the fridge for, uh, for four days now. We've been flipping it every two days. You'll see both packages. We've started to get a significant amount of juice and moisture that's come out of the pork belly. And that's not obviously not just the maple syrup that we were using. So again, flip these over, just like that. We wanna be doing this every two days. We're on day four, we've already done this once. You can see this tray already has juice in it. 
we were talking about that earlier in this video, that no matter how hard you try, you're always, always gonna get pork juice that leaks out of these bags. So make sure you put it in the tray. So there you have it, folks. It's that easy. Now we're gonna put this back in the fridge and let it rest for another two days. So we've had the bacon brining for a little over a week now. Now it's the ultimate test. Let's get into the fridge, see whether the brining's finished and we can throw it on the smoker. So now we've got the bacon out of the fridge. And the way to test whether your brine is finished working on the bacon is really just to feel it. And you can feel the bacon start to stiffen up. There's a ton of moisture that's come out of these packages. You can just see looking at that, that's all moisture that's been wicked out of the pork belly. And that's really a, a great sign. This, this is really stiff. It's not um, pliable as the original pork belly. So I think this is ready to hit the smoker. But before we do that, we're gonna take the pork bellies out of the bag, rinse them in the sink. Uh, there's some people that would suggest you then put them into a water bath and further desalinate the pork belly, but we don't do that step and, and we're really pleased with the outcome. So we're gonna save ourselves some time there. So just bring the pork belly over to the sink, open up your bags. You want to have a garbage can close by that you can just toss that into. Now, let's turn on the sink and just give these a quick rinse. And don't worry about getting all the time off of there, that actually adds a nice flavor. So we're just going to give it a quick rinse like that, and then move on to the next bag. Now that we've got the bacon all rinsed off after the cure, let's take this into the backyard and get the smoker fired up. So we're gonna be smoking this bacon on the trigger this morning, and we're gonna be using hickory pellets. So normally I'd use apple, I just don't have any on me this morning, so we'll see how the hickory flavor turns out relative to past batches that we've done. What we're gonna to wanna to do is get this on the low smoke setting. We're gonna to wanna to keep the temperature as low as we possibly can, and we don't want the internal temp of the bacon to go over 160 because that's when the fat's gonna render down on the bacon and you wanna keep all that fat actually on your bacon so that it fries up in your cast iron pan. So before we fire up the, the smoker, let's just make sure we've got our full pop of pellets. That should last us. I mean, this is only gonna be somewhere between a three to four hour cook. So we've got more than enough in there for that. So turn this to the smoke setting, turn it on. We'll let that go for three or four minutes until we start seeing white smoke coming out of the trigger. All right, now that we got a good amount of white smoke coming out of the smoker, we're gonna leave it on that smoke setting. Again, we wanna keep the temperature as low as we possibly can. And now we're just gonna pile the bacon onto the grates. loaded up we'll close down the lid here and we'll check in on this every 45 minutes or so just to check the internal temp and again we want to keep internal temps on the bacon sub 160 degrees and whenever your cook hits those temperatures you know you're finished so that should take somewhere between three to four hours and then we're done so we'll close this lid up and head back on inside this on for about two hours at this point. What we're gonna do is just move the bacon around on the smoker in order to make sure we get an even cook all around. There we go, we'll close the lid down now. We've got another two hours to go. You'll see on the smoke setting here, we've been keeping the grill at a fairly constant temperature of somewhere between 150 and 180. When you've got the trigger set to the smoke setting, that's what the factory preset is. It keeps it somewhere between those two temps. 
and that's actually great for what we're trying to accomplish here because as a reminder we don't want the internal temp of the bacon to ever go above 160. So we've got about another hour left on this cook. So we're just gonna check in on the temperature of this bacon here. We're gonna use the thermal pen. This is an incredibly accurate instant read thermometer. So we can just put the pen in here, 125. We're just checking to make sure nothing's going over 160. You can already start to see the smoke's gone into this bacon. We've got an incredibly rich color and this is coming along exactly as we need. So we're gonna put the lid down for maybe another half an hour and then we're gonna take this off. All right, let's check these out. Oh, just incredible. I'm gonna zoom in there. Look at the color that we've got on these. Absolutely incredible. You can really feel the firmness of the bacon now. And we've clearly got enough smoke over the course of the last three and a half hours here. So we're gonna turn off the smoker and bring these inside. Just look at that. So we've had the bacon inside resting for about 10 or 15 minutes. And now what you're gonna wanna do is cut it up into portions that you think you'll use in individual servings and then package it up and put it in the freezer. So you can use either uh, plastic Ziploc bags, you can use tin foil. The best would be vacuum package bags if you've got one of the vacuum sealers. But what we're gonna do is actually head up to the cottage right now. What we're gonna do in our next video is take one of these uh, bags of bacon and we're gonna cast, use cast iron and actually fry this bacon up over a live fire. So if you want to see that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button below, give us a like, let us know in the comments your thoughts on this cook, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right, bacon's in the car. Now let's go head up north.